Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. We're looking at the Transcendental Argument by Cornelius Van Til. Uh, all this information can be found on Trueform's True WordPress and also in his book, A Survey of Christian Epistemology, page 18 and 19. He writes, Van Til writes, one more point should be noted on the question of method. Namely that from a certain point of view, the method of implication may also be called a transcendental method. We have already indicated that the Christian method uses neither the inductive nor the deductive method as understood by the opponents of Christianity. But that it has elements of both induction and deduction in it. If these terms are understood in a Christian these elements are combined we have what is meant by a truly transcendental argument a truly transcendental argument takes any fact of experience which it wishes to investigate and tries to determine what the presuppositions of such a fact must be in order to make it what it is an exclusively deductive argument would take an axiom such as that every cause must have an effect and reason in a straight line from such an axiom drawing all manner of conclusions about God and man a purely inductive argument would begin with any effect and seek in a straight line for a cause of such an effect and thus perhaps conclude that this universe must have had a cause. Both of these methods are being used, as we all shall see, for the defense of Christianity. Yet neither of them could be thoroughly Christian unless they already presuppose God. Any method, as we pointed out, above all, does not maintain that not a single fact can be known unless it be that God gives that fact meaning is in an and on the other hand if God is recognized as the only and the final explanation of any and every fact neither the inductive nor the deductive method can any longer be used to the exclusion of the other that this is the case that can be realized if we keep in mind that the God we contemplate is an absolute God now the only argument for an absolute God that holds water is a transcendental argument a deductive, deductive argument as such leads only from one spot in the universe to another spot in the universe. So also an inductive argument as such can never lead beyond the universe. In either case there is no more than an infinite regression in both cases. It is possible the smart little girl to ask if God made the universe who made God and no answer is forthcoming. This answer is for instance a favorite reply of the atheist debater Clarence Darrell but if it be said to such opponents of Christianity that unless there be, were an absolute God, their own question and doubts would have no meaning at all. There is no argument in return. It lies the issue. It is the firm conviction of every epistemological self-conscious Christian that no human being can utter a single syllable, whether in negation or in affirmation, unless it were for God's existence. Thus the transcendental argument seeks to discover what sort of foundation the house of human knowledge must have in order to be what it is. It does not seek to find whether the house has a foundation, but it is presupposed that it has one. <coughs> we hold that the anti-Christian method, whether deductive or inductive, may be compared to a man who would first insist that the statue of William Penn on the City Hall of Philadelphia can be intelligently conceived of without the foundation on which it stands, in order afterwards to investigate whether or not this statue really has a foundation. Cornelius Van Til, a survey of Christian epistemology, page 18-19. Okay, um, the transcendental argument. Basically, the issue is facts and the interpretation of facts. Now, I'm going to talk about historical Jesus studies because that's something that I know quite a lot about. And I'm going to apply Van Til to historical Jesus studies. I think uh, Van Til is 100% correct that facts um, are not independent of interpretation facts require interpretation and so the question is whose interpretation is the correct interpretation of the facts that means you have to get into the question of what is your epistemological or theory of knowledge base in what you're using to investigate the facts so for example in historical Jesus studies the atheist will come to the historical facts about Jesus and the atheist might say that God uh, that Jesus did not rise from the dead but if this atheist epistemology not all atheists but if this particular atheist epistemology is that history is working forward by chance 
that um, morality is based on evolutionary process, then why would they want to investigate history? Because history presupposes some kind of pattern to investigate. But how do you get a pattern in a situation where your own worldview implies that history is chance? How do you get into uh, an asking questions about moral responsibility in history when there is no moral responsibility in your particular worldview? If you believe in evolution, there is no free will. So in other words, as we look at the intellectual foundation of the historian, we see that the presuppositions are not consistent with the methodology of historical inquiry. The foundations that they're basing their history foundations. So foundations is absolutely important. And I think that a lot of skeptics do not like to go into this subject because it soon it's you soon discover that this um, drum of scientism that a lot of the skeptics con continue to talk about where everything has to be given scientific verification unless it's scientific knowledge it's not viable knowledge the transcendental argument undercuts all that and shows that behind the science is an intellectual epistemological foundation and does your worldview give the right foundation for scientific inquiry and the answer is no and the same is to do with historiography so Van Til's transcendental argument is a I think um, there's a lot there to explore a lot there to develop and I think it's a powerful tool to critique uh, the critics of Christianity uh, because once you begin to unpeel their foundations, you find that their foundations are very weak. What do you think? Please let me know.